Hello world, I'm Brancliffe. We've got some information about the raid and a character rebalance to go alongside it. I will say I have already read this rebalance, so this isn't going to be a blind reaction. I don't really like this one, and it's going to become pretty obvious why, but uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. First off, I just gotta say, I know that uh, I've been hyping up this announcement that I really ought to show you guys, and I'm still working on that. It's just that uh, something else came up in the MMO space, and I, I just gotta talk about it first. It is really crazy. Those of you guys who are on Brandcliffe Siege Posting, which is linked in all my video descriptions, you already probably know what it is, but I gotta let everyone else know. Alright, with that in mind, let's check out this character rebalance. Alright, first off, changes with the raid. So, uh, Barbaric White Ghost Castle. Hard on! <laughs> Hardon's doppelganger target debuff icon changed. It's an enemy called Hardon. Uh, target debuff is removed when the stage is cleared, which makes sense. Stage 3, seal device HP adjusted. I always hate when they say adjusted. Like, did it go up? Did it go down? Let us know. Uh, height limit added. Wait time between Hyven's targeting and focus fire becomes longer. Hyven's carpet bombing damage increased. Hyven's chemical bomb debuff icon is shown. Altar of Wishes, stage 2, soul fragments HP adjusted and it can now be debuffed. And the ice pillars in stage 2 and stage 3 can be debuffed. Alright, uh, synergy. Some synergy effects changed. Uh, second line sun shower in a murky day does not reactivate for 15 seconds. I thought it was already like that. Oh well. Uh, I will say a lot of skills here were given the trait does not push super armor targets which is one of those things where I guess it's good, but really it should have been like that to begin with. I don't get it, but... So I'll just say, eh, this skill doesn't do the thing. Rapid Shot does not do the thing. Ease in the Hole had its damage nerfed a pretty sizable amount. Um, Elder Sills Fury does not do the thing. Focus. It's changed its damage increase from 6% to 10% in dungeons, but its damage is decreased from 2.4% to just 2% in PvP. Victor's Confidence, it is changed so that the magic damage increase is buffed from 6% to 10% in, P in dungeons, but nerfed from 2.4% to 2% in PvP. Cheat Code Rule Break, this is, this is a weird <laughs> and you can tell it's weird because I couldn't even fit all of it on screen. So now what it does is Oberon, Ophelia, and Ferdinand give aura buffs to nearby allies. <sighs> oh boy. Oberon increases special active skill damage by 10%. Ophelia increases physical and magical defense by 15% and 10% red damage. And Ferdinand increases hyperactive skill damage by 30%. I'd like to know to what extent this applies. Uh, if a metamorphia is around Ferdinand, do you need to transform while he's there? Or do you need to finish transforming when he's there? I don't know. In PvP, these things are nerfed to such small degrees that they may as well not even matter. Oberon gives 1% special active skill damage. The bare minimum, thanks Oberon. Uh, Ophelia gives 1.5% physical and magical defense and 1% red, and Ferdinand gives 3% hyperactive skill damage, which, well, <laughs> if Ferdinand is already out, there's not really a lot you can do with that. Uh, energetic Heart, skill cast 25% faster, that is actually pretty nice. Now, this is, this is where we get into things I don't like. A uh, heavy stance nerfed from 40% to 20%. Alright, let's talk about this. So, uh, Chung's defense stacking can get pretty gross. If you were to do, like, tactical field, and you were to throw on either heavy stance or chaos stance, like, it can get really gross. But I don't like the idea of this being nerfed to only 20%, because the entire idea of Heavy Stance is that he's blocking hits with the Destroyer. What kind of blocking is that if it only reduces damage by one-fifth? Like, at that point it's like, wow, it, the animation implies that it's a lot better than it actually is. But we're not done here, because Tactical Field is getting a nerf. It's 
a 20% damage decrease is being nerfed to 5%, and in PvP it's nerfed from 10% to 2.5%. Now in PvP, it's really the super armor that matters, but the, the defense increase was actually pretty relevant in dungeons, and now they're making it so small that it may as well not even be there. I'm not sure what you can actually do with 5%. Uh, damage taken less. Wow. Uh, words, English, you know what I mean. Uh, mod Tactical Field is also getting nerfed. Its damage decrease is nerfed from 30% to 15% in dungeons and from 15% to 7.5% in PvP. Uh, mod Steel of Time is getting a nerf. You are now going to need to have a 45 second uh, resurrection debuff rather than a 30-second 30, uh, 30 one, I almost said 30%. Um, in PvP, it is still going to be the same for two minutes. I will say, if you actually die twice in 45 seconds, that's k kind of on you, really, but, well, it's still a nerf that's worth mentioning. Uh, burst Grenade and Mod Burst Grenade are getting a pretty chunky amount of ignore defense, 70% and 50% in dungeons, and 20% for both in PvP. I don't know if this is going to be enough to make it so people start, like, really using these skills now, but there you go. Uh, Crimson Rose Madness, this is getting buffed, so the special active skill damage increase is being raised from 13% to 20%, and the reactivation cooldown is lowered from 20 seconds to 5 seconds. Uh, in PvP, the special active skill damage increase is nerfed from 13% to 10%. Uh, Red Bloom doesn't do the thing. Weshel, depending on growth stage, uh, it will increase your stats for 15 seconds rather than 7 seconds. Uh, Ruler of the Abyss is getting lowered from requiring 3 special actives to 2 special actives, but its effect is being nerfed but only in PvP from plus 50% skill damage to plus 15% skill damage. Uh, Great Birth is getting a damage buff. Uh, Help Nisha is getting a defense buff, but a defense nerf in PvP. Uh, Nisha Power. Memories from the forest give allies buffs when summoned. Summoning buffs don't stack with each other. Oh, oh, oh geez. So it's like what they're doing with... Code Essentia, but they're not doing this with Prime Operator, it seems. Strange. Uh, summon Poco. Poco Power gives allies nearby 8% damage increase for a certain amount of time. Uh, for 20 seconds in P uh, 20 seconds and 10 seconds in PvP. This was formatted kind of funny. Uh, Wookie decreases damage taken uh, from bosses by 15%. Uh, Zumu deals 10% more damage to bosses, or rather, everybody around it deals 10% more damage to bosses, not, like, you know, Zoom itself takes 10 whatever. And uh, BB gives plus 5% HP recovery per second, uh, but only for 6 seconds, although that is 30% uh, percent of your HP, but it's only 1%- oh, hold up! So in PvP, it recovers 1% of your HP for 1 second. Wow. Thanks, KOG. Really, really doing all of them a favor. I mean, I, 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 I guess I get it, because, like, healing in PvP is just really obnoxious in general. Uh, Illusia. Changes in HP reduce skill MP cost by 80% for a certain time. And that is changed to changes in HP increase special active damage for a certain amount of time. Skill costs reduce to 80%. Special active skill damage increase 10% for 10 seconds rather than 20 seconds. Oh boy, um, I will say I'm not such a big fan of this change because I, I just don't like HP scaling strats in general, especially in Elsor since you're chugging potions all the time. You don't really have a lot of control over keeping your HP low if that's something you're doing intentionally. Uh, some items will restore both HP and MP, and if you don't want your HP restored but you want your MP restored, eh, tough luck for you, gotta suck it up. So what do I have to say about this? Um, I feel like some of the changes in here are just things that I just assumed were already true because I just figure the game works. Why would I think that? Like, skills not pushing super armor targets, I thought that was like the point. I, like, do they not know what super armor means? Um, the damage buffs 
I, I don't really have a lot of opinions about them. Obviously, I'm not such a big fan of the Chung Defense nerfs because honestly, Chung Defense was like a big draw to why I played this game in the first place. The idea of giving summons uh, buffs, that's something that's kind of weird to me. Its execution seems a little strange because right now the PvP versions of these buffs mean so little that they may as well not even exist. In dungeons, this sounds kind of clunky because I'd imagine you need to be within a certain range of the summons, and then it's like, well, how close do you need to be? Is there a visual indicator for the range that you need to be within them? It just sounds kind of awful. I much more prefer with a lot of um, the old aura buffs from before, which I mean, I say old, but a lot of them are still there. It's just I don't have mine anymore, just chunk things. And also random things. I, I like that you cast them on your party members and then they just have them for a bit. This sounds a little bit high maintenance, but because so much of this game is about buffs these days, eh, I get it. I don't like that um, Code Essencia and uh, Nisha get buff based or summon based party buffs, but Prime Operator doesn't. But of course, that's just how it is. KOG hates Prime Operator. That's basically what I've got to say about this update. So, like I said before, I've got a crazy big announcement that I want to share with all of you guys. It's just that something else came up and I really need to talk about that first. And uh, that's all I've got to say for this video. I'm Brantcliffe. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>